The head of Nigeria's petroleum company Limited uh, told a legislative committee last week that a four-kilometer pipeline from the Forcados export terminal has been used to steal oil for nine years, resulting in the theft of hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil per day. Ex-militant leader, government Epemupolo, alias Tompolo, uh, on Sunday said that over 58 tapping points that oil bunkers have used in stealing crude oil from the nation's pipelines have been discovered. This theft has resulted in revenue loss uh, amounting to more, 300, more, uh, more than $300 million uh, monthly. This has hurt Nigeria's economy that is battling meet uh, that is battling meet up to battling to meet up with her expenditure uh, we'll be discussing this uh, when we have uh, dr uh, kalani mohammed in the studio yeah. uh, we also have uh, joining us via zoom from benin an energy economist uh, a former secretary and legal advisor to nnpc uh, professor yinka omorobe uh, she is joining us. Uh, she is also a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us on Daybreak this it's morning. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And thank right. you for having me here yeah. this morning. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. All right. So uh, the past few days, uh, the media has been washed with the revelations coming out uh, from the Niger Delta region as a result of this uh, operation uh, by government Tompolo. Uh, alongside, you know, the military, the NNPC, you know, in collaboration and, and all that. And quite shocking, some of the revelations that we are seeing. Uh, but <clears throat> the question that has been on my mind is that why now? Why are we seeing this now, given the fact that oil theft has, you know, gone on in Nigeria for decades? Why suddenly we are seeing some of these revelations? It's the way the cookie crumbles. You understand me? You see the profligacy of this menace started in the 80s during the military era. The military started this oil bunkering, but because they are forced on their own, nobody could question them up to today. And after the military era, since 1999, when we started the democratic dispensation, the scale now of oil theft has reached the sky because the Nigerian syndrome is to make money quick, quickly. They want to make sure that they are rich over time. And uh, uh, we have to thank this current management of NNPC, led by Dr. Mele Carey, for this startling revolution. It has been on, some say over 40 years, some say 22 years. And even if, the way they mentioned that nine, uh, about nine years, they were able now to find out where all these uh, oil thieves tapped our pipeline into the sea where they load the batches into the you know, uh, uh, cargo vessels. You see, we cannot say this was not done by professionals because the way I saw those pipes, I was in the refinery as an instrument engineer and as a worker, worker's representative, as a, an activist, a unionist. I was flabbergasted. I was dumbfounded when I saw the manner, the way and manner the pipes were tapped. It cannot be done by a local individual. It has to be by professionals. You know, I'm, I'm curious as well, you know, as yes. to the certainty with which uh, we are, you know, presenting this matter. I mean, uh, it's said to be going on for nine years, so it's very specific about the number of years. And I'm wondering, how did we even arrive at that since no arrests have been made? Uh, have the investigations been concluded for us to have been able to tell, you know, in, in exact terms that that's this what, has gone on for nine that's years? That's why I said 
it has been going on for over years, even more than nine years. But if the NMPC mentioned that it's nine years, I think they might have gotten a clue from that incident that happened where it was stopped. They went back to records and found out that nine years ago, the pipes were attacked. You see, that's why they engaged Tom Polo, as you mentioned earlier. When this man was engaged, he said, he, they were saying it's an, he was an ex-militant. He was somebody who was also vandalizing uh, pipes before. But somebody, as he started this job now, you can see the revelations we've been, we, we started seeing. And uh, only yesterday, Tampolo mentioned that since they started this job, a very wonderful job, threats have been coming from all these oil tips. They are very powerful, very rich, and we know definitely they are going to fight back, and they have started fighting back. So he said, he and his people are equal to the task. So what I don't understand is, Tampolo mentioned that on one part on the right-hand side, you will see Ami Gumbot. On the left-hand side, you will see Navy Gumbot. But down there, bunkers are having a field day. And at times, they even escort these thieves to the high seas. So it's, I don't know, the GMD and the CDS went to Niger Delta just currently. And uh, what we saw from all indications, I think something drastic will be Will be done. Well, talking about something drastic being done, I do remember that in April, the GMD of NMPC uh, at a press conference said that between January and March this year, 600 billion naira, or oil worth 600 billion naira, mm. had been stolen. Mm. I mean, that is in a country that borrows to, the, to fund its budget. Yeah. He said that in April. Yes. Why are we here now? Because uh, despite the fact that he said that in April, we found that the oil theft con continued. In June, we we're only able to produce just a little over 1.2 million barrels, mm. despite the fact that we we're supposed to produce 1.8 million, according to uh, OPEC, OPEC allocation. Yes. In July, it dropped to just a little over 1.1 million uh, barrels. And in August, it came to 970 something. Yes. The lowest in over 20 years. Yes. So why is it that despite the fact that he found out this and at the press conference disclosed this in April, yeah. we still have that. As a matter of fact, it's even, it appears to be increasing till now. And that's why Tampolo was engaged. Because the security agencies are the ones that monitor our pipelines. It's not an NPC. It's not their job. You have division of labor. NMPC is to explore and to produce. After they do that, it's left for the security agencies now to make proper monitoring, proper surveillance on our pipeline. That's why it's surprising me. I'm always smitten that these people, you have the police, you have the army, you have the navy, you have the all other security agencies but still, oil tapes strives. All right. All right. So let's bring in uh, Professor Yinka Morogwe in here now. Um, well, Prof, uh, let me just put this to you that uh, now we can say uh, that uh, the contracting of this uh, project to Tompolo is now justified, isn't it? Given the kind of uh, revelations that we have seen, because uh, we have seen initially that there have been reactions, you know, criticism against uh, government for contracting him this project. So what's your take? Well, um, I, I think the first thing I is that this is the first time that Tom Polo has been contracted in this area. Around 2010, Tom Polo, Tom Polo and Ogu were contracted as well to be in charge of the, the security of our lines 
I will guess, I mean, I will hazard the guess that um, after that contract ended, um, the theft and whatever had been happening worsened and worsened, and that is why they have brought in Tom Polo. But I think we should realize that um, we may not know much about the details of this theft, but it has been known in many quarters for quite some time. As far back as 1999, I was at a workshop for legislators. We were actually organizing one, and Shell showed pictures of Nigerian oil being stolen and of vessels that were out at sea that were taking this oil. In the same way for uh, also about 20 years ago, I was at an American seminar, uh, seminar organized by the US Navy. And they showed pictures of the Nigerian coastline at night. And you could see ships all over the place. What were they doing there? The primary thing that we export is oil. And it's not rocket science to assume that that is what they were taking out. So we're dealing with organized crime that has been on for a long time, and I believe the government has brought in somebody who is familiar with the sea, the, the water is the terrain of the Ijaws, and who knows and who has seen a lot of what is happening, because we're dealing with high technology and we're dealing with massive, massive vessels. Prof, Prof why is it that, why does it look as if it is now Nigeria wants to tackle this? Like you noted, it has been going on for long. As a matter of fact, only recently, Angola and Libya, which does not have a central government, overtook Nigeria in oil production. Why did we wait to this point? My theory is that um, the reform process, this is one of the side effects, positive side effects of the reform process. Because within the reform process, you have to have a national petroleum company that is now viable, that is earning money, and that is now being held to higher standards of governance and accountability. So there's some simple counting and addition that will show that things are not matching up. So the, the, the national, that is NNPC Limited, is under an obligation to prove itself and so for this reason, there are certain things that have been covered that have to be exposed and brought to the limelight. So it is the duty of the company to look around and check on anything that is affecting its bottom line, anything that is affecting its, its um, profitability, and obviously anything that is affecting its ability to deliver in line with what it is supposed to deliver under reform and under the Petroleum Industry Act. And definitely. Okay. Yep. Incredibly bad governance. So for me, it's a positive effect of the reform process. And I believe it is the reform process that has thrown up all these figures and thrown up all these revelations because these activities have been hidden in plain sight all mm. this time. All right, you know, um, so would ask the question that, uh, let, me, let me put this to uh, our guest here in the studio, that how ready are we really to deal with this? A whole lot of people are involved in this whole process. We have IOCs, we have locals, sometimes even traditional rulers. Uh, we have, you know, uh, even officials or security officials like, uh, you know, uh, Tom Polo has, has said he made very, very indicted statements, yeah. you know, about our security personnel. And you are co you corroborated that, uh, you know, right. earlier in your statement and all that. Yeah. So how ready are we? How confident are you about our willingness to actually go through with this to the bottom of it? Because a whole lot is involved. Yep. Yeah. You see, what we need to do, only recently the... Uh, Chief Operating Officer of NNPC, Mr. Kolo, during the briefing in the villa. I believe you people are there. And uh, you mentioned about 193 suspects were arrested, about 375 local refineries were found there. And they are in the process of being destroying them. 
about 49 uh, trucks were also arrested. And uh, they saw over 240 something, about 45 reservoirs, which they use in local refining. That means the locals are involved, the governors of those states are involved, the traditional rulers, the security agencies, and as you mentioned, the international uh, oil, oil, oil companies. So all we need to do now, since we have NMPC Limited, which is a limited liability company now, it's not the former company that all government officials will come and direct them negatively. This time around, you have a company which uh, Petroleum Industry uh, uh, Act has been determined to move the NMPC forward. NMPC is now transited, and uh, you have good management there. So I think what we need to do, because I kept repeating it, we need a stringent law that during a batch of blessed memory, when you touch our pipeline, you are shot. Are you saying we do not have enough laws? Because most, what happens most times in Nigeria is not the, in, uh, the unavailability of the laws, but the implementations of available laws. This is what I'm telling you now with the new NMPC. It's not like, you know, it, formerly it was generally government owned, where officials who come to NMPC even dip their hands into their coffers. Today, you can never do that again. Because the law that has established this company now has given them the prerequisite to do business, open the system to Nigeria and international community with laws, you know, guiding them, which <laughs> without any doubt, there is no how, there will be no impl implementation of any policy they bring forward. So. If, for me, I would have loved, there, there was a miscellaneous offense law that before, once you touch pipeline, you don't need to be in prison for life. All they need to do, because they are tempering with over 200 million people, they are sabotaging our economy. So all we need to do, you mentioned, were you the one that mentioned that uh, Angola has overtaken us now? and one other country. Libya. Libya. So uh, the way, the trend that is happening in NMPC today, look at what happened just in uh, 2018 when they took over. They declared profit of about 287 billion, which has never happened before. And today you can see with the new company, their financial statements are always in, their, in the public domain. Just recently, 2021, NMPC had declared a profit of about 674 uh, billion, right. which has never happened before. All right, so, so I'm coming. Mm. So with this, that means there's a new management, there are new laws governing NMPC Limited, and we believe the way at which they are going with the acceleration Nigeria, with all the royalties and the taxes they will be getting from all the businesses they will transact, Nigeria, the sky will be delivered. All right. Delivered. So let me, uh, let me go to Prof. Uh, now, you know, Prof, th th this for me is like, yes, we on the one hand, we have government trying to do the right thing. And good enough that we have a government that is willing. Uh, we've seen that, yes, the coming of the PIA, has helped to bring about transparency in the system and clean up you know, the system in some ways. But there are high profile people involved in this, sometimes even in government. What will it take to sustain this? Because uh, all the reactions that we are seeing is not for nothing. I mean, some of the militants that are now resurfacing and all of that are threatening uh, you know, for a fight and all that. What will it take to sustain this? Especially if you look at the fact that some security personnel are also, you know, complicit in this. Well, 
Um, I, I would say that political will at the highest level is what will actually sustain what we're talking about. Because when you look at the level of the theft, you look at the time of the theft and answers and issues, you will see that so many different factors have been involved. It's good that the NNPC has decided to confront this um, whole issue head on. But the extent to which it can confront it, the present management can confront it, is really going to depend on whether it in fact has the highest political will. I believe that reform in the first place was seriously fought by these cartels and these different people that were benefiting from these and other anom anomalies in the industry. They were the silent elephants in the room that did not talk that nobody saw, but they were still there. So that, that, that is what I'd say, like you said, there are so many um, different elements that are involved and that are benefiting. If the government is really determined to do this, and if it will truly, truly support the present management of NNPC, and also Tom Polo right now, because there's no doubt that he knows a lot of what is happening, then we will see a lot of revelations and hopefully there will be a change so that our oil can be sold uh, legitimately. I mean, it's an open secret internationally that Nigeria is trading a lot of oil, several dollars below whatever the accepted price is. And it's also an open secret internationally that that oil that is being traded is a stolen crude from Nigeria. Prof, Prof, only recently the upstream uh, Petroleum Re Regulatory Commission said that there was a need for a state of emergency to be declared in this sector because of oil theft. Now, it's true that the government has brought in the Tompolo security outfit to support the normal security outfits that we have. But is that enough? Is that enough? I mean, that depends. In the first place, why were the normal security services not able to do all this that we're talking about? Naturally, if you're talking about the water and security in the water, who are we talking about? We're talking about the Navy. In addition to that, there were also some other security companies, private security companies that were brought in all this time. What did they do? Not much at the end of the day. So we're dealing with... Um, <laughs> right back to political will at the highest um, level to really be able to attack what we're talking about. It appears as if the more we talk about the oil theft, the more it thrives. Because, I mean, I mean if you look at the figures from when uh, the GMD of NNPC spoke in April to now, the, the oil theft has increased. So it doesn't appear yeah. like it looks as if the more we talk about it the more some nigerians feel oh this sector is lucrative we can go into it that's what it looks like that's because nigeria has never done one thing that is consequence management nigeria needs to catch people and punish them as long as you shout and you say oh there's this huge crime there's all this theft you attract some other people who say wow hundreds of dollars another way of making money and they go in. They don't see anybody being punished. They don't see anybody being persecuted. They just hear a lot of noise. That does not deter anybody. We have to have consequence management. We have to make sure that people are arrested, people are caught, companies are thrown out of business for this and their management jailed. We need to ensure that once there's consequence management and people know that if you do this particular bad thing, you go into this crime, you will be prosecuted and you will be caught and there is no godfather and nobody up anywhere that is going to get you out of this mess and your money will be confiscated and taken from you so you will not still have that money there after you have served a paltry jail term. As long as we don't do some of those things, then we will have problems. All right, Prof, talking about that, I remember the GMD also said in April that there was a need for special courts to try uh, pipeline uh, vandals, uh, oil thieves, and all of that. But don't we have a, the existing courts? Can they handle this? <laughs> they are slow. The courts are slow as snails. So that is a big problem. For, for you to deal a decisive blow, you need to make sure that you can rapidly try these people, rapidly prosecute and get your 
sentences out. So I think that will be why the GMD was talking about special courts. Also, when you're dealing with oil industry, you're dealing with a level of specialization. So it's usually good to have judges who have an understanding of what uh, the industry is and what is being spoken about, because then they will not, you know, they, 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 they will know more, they will know what they're doing and they will be able to come down with concise judgments. So I think I support him. He has a, he has a huge task, frankly speaking, huge task before him and not an easy one. All right. I uh, will over your question uh, is inconsequential uh, because uh, what the GMD said is nothing but the truth. All we need is, as you mentioned, is the political will in this country. Uh, but I had during the interaction with GMD, with the upstream Senate, they were saying that uh, maybe they are going to, because it's their job now to promulgate a law. And that law, in this country, people don't think, they don't tend to, you know, allow laws to work. All we need to do, as she said, political will. We must stamp our feet. We are not in a military era. This is a democratic setup. But nevertheless, since they are tempering with the lives of over 200 million Nigerians, then all we need to do is stringent laws. People must be prosecuted, as she said. Already 193 are already in custody. So we want to see how they are going to prosecute them and make sure that, uh, for me, they should be shot. Okay, now you, you talk about some that have been arrested. How many yes. of them are these security officials? Because, uh, you know, yesterday went, I mean, when I watched the interview with Tom Polo, he mentioned the fact that what we see, you know, the, the illegal bunkers, some of them, those are skirmishes. Those are those not are major. They are locals. Just, those are locals, yes. you know. But yeah. the huge theft that actually goes on, is done in collaboration with sometimes government officials uh, and all of that. Yeah. So in that arrest, how many government officials have we seen arrested? How many names have we seen out? And in that any case, would you say, would you, would, you, would you recommend that perhaps we should consider a deployment of our security that is uh, personnel since that some of them are actually complicit? In well, uh, we cannot uh, predict what will happen now. Because when uh, the, C the CDS accompanied the GMD, they said they have seen the situation on ground and they are going to make proper investigation. But those that were arrested, when the GMD was asked to reveal the identities of those people, he said they are already working towards taking them to court. The court now, when they reach court, will be able to know those personalities. I believe is a Herculean task for the new management of NMPC because this thing has been going on for quite a long time. And uh, these thieves, they are stinking rich, they are very powerful, they connive with even separates, they have their own gumballs too. But we thank God, the new management now has also created a control room somewhere in Abuja here, where they are monitoring the Niger Delta, where all these our facilities, the flow lines are. And I believe uh, we are calling on President Momodou Buhari. We have, this our government, we have only about four to five months to go. We'd like him to stamp his feet very well to make sure that all these tips are brought to book, but they okay. are dangerous and very powerful. All right. All right, let me uh, get the input of Prof on this. What would be, what would be the role of, uh, you know, government agencies, NEMASA, for instance, the Nigerian Ports Authority, for instance, the uh, Niger Delta Development Commission, the Ministry of Niger Delta, and all of these uh, related agencies? What would be their role in all of this? Oh, I think that... Um Basically, their roles are to continue doing whatever it is that they have been set up to do. And in the course of that, where they do see anomalies or they do see anything that seems to suggest that there is some oil theft taking place, they should actually come out um, 
and talk, you'll find that the security agencies have a big role to play here. And I'd say as well that, okay, some people have been arrested so far, but look, you are dealing with the foot soldiers. Foot, the arrest of foot soldiers is actually very meaningless. Until yeah. you have arrested the kingpins, exactly. you really are not sending any strong um, signal to anybody. But I believe that if all the agencies simply concentrate on doing what it is that they're supposed to do, then a lot will come out. It's noteworthy that NNPC was concentrating on what it was supposed to do. It, it realized that even though it had made profits this year, this was nothing concerned to the profit that it could have made, as many commentators made, uh, you know, um, st stated. So in this case, NNPC is there facing its business, and in facing its business, it now has to talk about these different areas. It businesses diligently. A lot more will come up. A lot more will be thrown up. Prof, like every other crime in Nigeria, the foot soldiers, it's always easier to, it's always easier to pick them up and arrest them. Uh, like every other crime, like kidnapping and all of that, you know, the, the people behind, that's usually the very difficult tax. To what extent do you think they'll be able to get at those ones? Political will, that's it, will at the highest level. And um, also for us, we need to deal with some deep systemic issues in Nigeria right now. We need to deal with deep systemic issues, frankly, within the criminal justice system. And um, deep systemic issues, you, those you, are the you, things you know, that in, stop in all of, primary all of, people being taken. The, Unfortunately now, who are the people who get arrested or prosecuted? It's the poor people. It's not actually the biggest thing. So we, yes, we, these are deep systemic issues. You, you, you know, uh, you know Prof, <clears throat> in all of the discussions that we've been having, uh, you know, I mean, both of you, the guests that we have in the studio, keep, you know, referring back to the issue of political will, political will. Yeah. Where has this political will been since? Why, are we, why is this political will just seem to be resurfacing all of a sudden? Maybe I'll start with you as your concluding yeah, thought. You see, uh, Nigeria is a country of many nationalities. Nigeria is a country of people who, when something happens, for example, on, on political terrain, somebody who steal money, they know he has stolen. Understand? They will now, when he goes back to this, his own community, when the person is being prosecuted, they will hide him. They will say, this is our own. Unless we are able to fight in this country, ethnic nationalism, tribalism, sentiments, bureaucracy, nothing will happen. Unless we adopt the system of patriotism, that Nigeria, you must be patriotic and the spirit of nationalism. You know that Nigeria belongs to you. You don't have any other country like what America does. A citizen of America is willing to die holding America's flag. How many of us are willing to die for this country? And that is the problem. By the time you are prosecuting somebody who has done wrong, there will be fire on the mountain. Uh, all right. And that is uh, why problem. we have this problem today. Okay. So we hope, as I mentioned earlier, before this government elapses, we should be able to take strong measures to make sure that however highly placed somebody is, you should be brought to book. Okay, all right. Uh, Prof, your final words on this. Uh, well, uh, some of the maybe uh, culprits involved in this may have some kind of immunity, I'm just saying. Perhaps they have some kind of immunity as provided by the law. What then happens? Well, I'll go on from where he stopped and basically say that if we can have a country whereby people are truly equal before the law and where there isn't one law for the more connected people and another law for those who have less connection, then, you know, that will go a long way. 
But uh, because, like I keep on saying, consequence management is very important. But I think also Nigerians need to have an understanding of just how badly impacted we all are by the level of theft that is going on. First of all, we still remain a mono economy. We're still a country that's heavily dependent on petroleum. To have so much being stolen is just det detrimental to the lifestyles and the well-being of all of us in Nigeria. So we're really, really negatively impacted. We need to really see the oil thief, no matter how highly placed he is, he is as a, a saboteur, an economic saboteur, and one that absolutely does not want or desire the interest of oh. the narrative and let people know that. They are from, negatively impacted by what from is some happening. persons say that well, all this oil thief should be considered as committing treason. Do you feel that way? I actually do. Hmm. Hmm. I oh, all right, that. all right. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your perspectives. Uh, for joining us on Daybreak, quite an interesting uh, uh, discussion here. Yeah. Well, I thought that was those no, were your final words, words earlier. <laughs> what 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 I want is uh, all of us. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Yeah. We don't have any other country apart of this country. So what do I want is all hands must be on deck to support the new NMPC, to support so that the, as they are now moving positively to make sure that they curtail this oil theft or if possible they eradicate it. We must not bring in tribalism, as I mentioned earlier. Mm. We must make sure that Nigeria is ours with the spirit of nationalism and patriotism. All right. If you do that, I think uh, we'll be able to, all to, right. to, to fight all these uh, crooks. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you again for joining uh, Dr. Kelani Mohammed uh, here in the studio. Uh, he is uh, an energy expert and also a former NNPC senior staff. Uh, joining us virtually uh, was uh, Professor Yenka Omorogbe. She is a former secretary and legal advisor to NNPC, also a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us and giving your perspectives uh, on this matter. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure. All right.